Uh, welcome back to our online course, Application of GIS in Conservation. My name is Josphat Keshoki. I'm an ecologist. So the, this module, uh, we'll be talking about mapping, monitoring, uh, mapping and monitoring of uh, habitat loss. So in the previous uh, modules, module one, module two, talked about conservation of ch uh, conservation challenges and global biodiversity framework. We talked about uh, protected area data management. So in module three, we want to connect the two and now move to uh, a deeper dive into the, the biodiversity hotspot habitats. We try to see how we can track illegal activities in the conservation aspect. Uh, how do we go about prioritizing conservation area that we want to work in and also how do we involve community in this. So uh, when we're talking about biodiversity hotspots, we need to understand uh, uh, the differences we, we use for the areas that we want to set up maybe or prioritize areas of conservation. So biodiversity hotspots is uh, inclined when we're talking about exceptional uh, species richness and vulnerability in an area. So while defining the hotspots, two criteria are commonly used. One is where we have uh, uh, the number of species of uh, trees, about 1,500, and the area should be uh, about 70% um, lost uh, from its original uh, maybe extent. So in this aspect, when we have an, uh, an organism in this area, and it's only found in that specific area, we uh, uh, term that uh, organism as endemic. So it's not found in any other place, but only one that area. So if, an, if that area is completely uh, lost, then also that uh, species get lost. And that's where we come into uh, talking about uh, species extinction. So currently we have about 36 uh, hotspots globally recognized and they occupy about 2.5% of them. The earth. So uh, this we we have been found to uh, um, to be lost almost uh, eighty five percent of their original habitat. So if an area meets these criteria, uh, has a vascular plant of a thousand five hundred and has lost almost seventy percent of that, then it becomes a, a hotspot area. So uh, the reason as to why we are talking about the hotspot area uh, is. Uh, comes about due to a biodiversity loss. So currently we're seeing about 10% or 10, 10 times higher than the historical average uh, of biodiversity loss. And the, the reason for these uh, losses are mostly due to human population, uh, consumption and mobility. So we have a huge number of uh, human uh, uh, population, so requiring uh, extended places where they can settle. So by them maybe encroaching a certain area, this area becomes uh, declines and the biodiversity in that area gets squeezed. So over time that area uh, is completely lost and the species in that area are uh, lost. So, but we also need to note that uh, sometimes it's not intentional to have this biodiversity loss, especially due to uh, human uh, activities. So in most cases, because of the human population and the, the need to um, acquire a livelihood, then them approaching or the population approaching or encroaching a certain area uh, reduces that area, causing the, the biodiversity loss in that, in that area. So we need to solve this, but to solve this, we need to understand what's the, the, the pressures that are happening or what's the pressures that are and uh, have engraved these uh, habitats. So uh, we could also maybe get some uh, a quote from Michael who says, uh, extinction is the most irreversible and tragic of all environmental calamity, whereby if one or a species is lost, it's lost forever. And it's no longer, uh, it's no longer a bit of that. Yes, so uh, we need to uh, get into details of this so that we are able to understand how do we go about solving the, the biodiversity cri crisis that we see in our, in our ecosystem. So uh, we have key drivers that have been identified as causing biodiversity loss. One is habitat destruction due to maybe human encroachment, over-exploitation, so our resource is uh, used, like for example, overfishing. So, so many fishermen, the same resource, uh, when we have so many of them in a certain area, they could cause a huge pressure to them, to that maybe population of the fish in that specific area. Pollution is also another, another uh, uh, driver that we're talking about, and the invasive species. 
Uh, so if we look at maybe the, the habitat loss uh, based on, uh, uh, dynamics, so the habitat, the area where a species uh, is found, but then the habitat loss, the decline in the, or the disappearance of the biological diversity. So this habitat loss, if it goes beyond 70% and the, the, the plants in that area are about 1,500. So this now becomes the, the criteria that we talked about in the previous slide of, of the one that uh, is used to, uh, to tell or to classify an area as a, as a hotspot. So what mostly causes the, the, the habitat loss uh, currently, what we well, what has been identified mostly causing habitat loss per se uh, um, large conversion of, for agriculture, deforestation, urbani uh, urbanization, or infrastructure development. So, if a habitat is lost, what's the effect of that? One, we're talking about uh, maybe fragmentation. So, an area, if it was uh, one homogeneous uh, forest, for example, and maybe. Uh, uh, agriculture or a portion of it is used for agriculture. It uh, creates a disconnect or disjoinment between the, the parcel of land. So you find that maybe if the, uh, the area, uh, the agricultural area cuts across the, the forest, it creates uh, maybe uh, two separate uh, parcels of forest that animals are limited or maybe gets difficulties moving from one area to, to the other. The same if maybe, for example, a river is dammed, it's the effect or the effect of the damming could be felt uh, down, downstream whereby maybe if certain sediments were supposed to go to the ocean, they, cut, they get cut. So the, maybe the mangrove, depending on the sediments, uh, can uh, get affected in this. So you find that the mangrove are, are dying due to lack of sediments or maybe lack of nutrients that come from them, from the river uh, upstream. So the deforestation bit of it. So if we dig deep into the deforestation aspect of maybe habitat loss, we find that there are quite a number of uh, aspects uh, causing the, the deforestation. One uh, of them, or uh, the commonly one known are, uh, we have agricultural expansion, we have timber harvesting, urban expansion, mining activity, or human settlement. In case we have maybe, for example, the, the um, conflicts between community, conflict between uh, countries. Eh? And then the refugees have to be settled somewhere. So the resettlement a bit of it uh, has to be done in, in a specific area. So if the forest is the one that's uh, maybe uh, agreed upon that will be the one to be used, then that area will be lost due to the human settlement or maybe trying to accommodate the, the resettlement of the, of the refugees. So if we're talking about urbanization, we're talking about expanding the, the areas that uh, maybe our towns uh, have. This is because of maybe the human increase. So if a country decides or agrees that they want to expand an area and the only area that's uh, available is maybe into the, into the forest. So there is um, the cost and benefit analysis. So what do we get from the forest vis-a-vis -vis what the, the urban, uh, urbanization would bring to the, to the country. So this, if it's not planned well, it could cause uh, or it could have impact on the, the biodiversity of that area. Again, the agriculture. So we can't do without agriculture, but then it has to be done in a sustainable way. So if we having agriculture in new areas, maybe forest lands or maybe coastal area, so we need to do it in a sustainable way whereby we balance between the biodiversity of that area and the human livelihood that uh, need to be acquired from, from that space. So we need to look at how do we go about doing our agriculture in a sustainable way that doesn't also compromise the biodiversity in that area. Otherwise, if we do it haphazardly, we are about to lose the the, the species found in a, in a certain area. And we've seen if one species is lost, it's completely erased from the the, the world and the, maybe the benefits that we could have gotten from it uh, uh, is also uh, erased from, from that. So if we look or if we connect all these, the habitat laws and the targets that we are talking about, remember we, when we're talking about the, the GBF targets, we always looking, we always trying to understand how are they related. So when we're talking about target one, which is talking about the spatial planning, how is it related in terms of addressing habitat loss and degradation. So it's, uh, it's connected in a way that uh, by us uh, doing spatial planning of a certain area, we are able to, 
to work around how do we sustainably use that area without maybe compromising each uh, if any other maybe ecosystem services that the, the same area is providing. Again, if an area has completely been degraded or flexible due to deforestation or maybe flooding, then we need to uh, undertake restoration. So our target two in the GBF uh, targets, um, uh, which talks about restoring an area, this one, if it's done in an effective way, would be used uh, as one way of addressing habitat loss and, and degradation. Again, when we talk about uh, target three, there's more of uh, maybe uh, establishing areas that we can set aside that will maintain the, the biodiversity of a, of a certain area. So at of, as of now, the GBF target three is talking about uh, getting to uh, reach um, uh, 30 by 30, uh, 30 by 30. So 30 percent of the land and the sea of a country by 2030. So if this one is done in a sustainable way, well structured and using the spatial aspect of the of the country, then we will be able to achieve one the target three of uh, achieving 30 by 30, and the same same time uh, maintaining our biodiversity in that area, where whereby also the humans' livelihood will be catered into into place. So when we look at this in totality, you see that uh, we need to understand all these aspects so that we are able to, to plan well and also utilize the resources that we have for our benefits uh, for today's generation and also for future generation. So uh, this gives us uh, like uh, an indicator of how do we go about uh, the whole aspect of conservation or how where do we use our GIS in when we're talking about habitat uh, biodiversity, hotspots conservation. So uh, I think I'll stop there, but we have an, a chance to discuss this more, uh, maybe in uh, our Q&A. So feel free to uh, put up your question and we can dive deep into, into this. Thank you.